All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, the dog arrived safely, and she is just having a good old time. You will see her uh, before masses, all all masses this weekend. you were taught. Prior planning prevents piss poor performance, right? So that's if you were in the army, that's where that, that's where that extra P comes from. So otherwise, prior planning prevents poor performance. Uh, I can tell you, and I don't know how much, um, how much uh, uh, what, Paul, what Paul talked about, but this is the, first of all, how many people have wills? Pratt powers of attorney? It's a good bunch. Okay. Now, how many don't? Don't be afraid to raise your hand. A couple don't. Okay. They're still doing this with priests. Uh, they handed uh, they handed us out all this past week, um, our, all of our um, uh, power power of attorney, durable power of attorney, will, all that stuff. We're horrible about filling them out, right? We've had three, we have four priests die within the past two years. One of them uh, had a, was very organized. One of them didn't have anything. One of them had one that they changed at the last minute, uh, including somebody that was a little notorious. Uh, uh, well, that's not the right word. Uh, a little shady in, in there. So, somebody who had been taking care of them, taking care of them all of a sudden, and it just changed. Uh, and then some. And then one guy just didn't have anything, right? And so. Um, <clears throat> It's, this is, if you, if you, who's been dumped on by their parents on this before? Not me. B siblings? Okay, family members. Yeah, I know you have. I've lived through that with you. It, excuse my language, it sucks, right? It's hard enough to, to try and figure out what to do with some, uh, with, with um, a loved ones, um, with all their, with, with their, with their uh, property, their possessions, and it's just a fight. It can, it, it's like it always turns into a fight when my, when my uh, grandma died and um, then my dad died. Um, my dad was, uh, he had been given this pie safe. This is the great pie incident, pie safe incident of 2000 and whatever it was. Grandma had given him a pie safe and um, then when dad died, somebody said, no, to my mom, that's not your pie safe, that's my pie safe. It's in the will. You know what a pie safe is? It's a big, it's a big cabinet that you put pies in. <laughs> and my mother was attached to this thing because she used it exactly as it was meant to be used for. She freaking stole, put toilet paper in it. <laughs> but this was her pie safe, and it was not going to be taken away from her. And I've seen families at funerals when things, uh, when, you know, dad would have wanted, when I, when I was a chaplain, this is the, where I'm going to jump off from, but when I was a chaplain, you know, dad, would, would, dad didn't, wouldn't want this to happen. Dad would have wanted, wanted this to happen. He, wanted, wanted, he wouldn't have wanted to be kept on, um, on, um, on uh, a ventilator for this long. I, I know he wouldn't have done that. Well, what, who's in charge of his, his records? Well, the brother is. Well, what does the brother say? Well, the brother says he wants to be. He, he wants to have the, the ventilator. Uh, and I'm not talking just as Catholics. I'm talking as a, just as a regular, just um, uh, non-denominational chaplain. He said well, he did not want to be on a ventilator. <coughs> so there's all different ways this can go. It it's gonna. Be, it, it, some of you in this room are going to end up having a situation like that in your lives, at the end of your life, at some point, unless you do what Paul told you and what I told you and then what, J uh, what Jamie is going to, uh, Janie is going to tell you in a minute because it's, 
this is all about front loading. This is all about front loading. My mom died. I'll tell you the story. My sister and my mom didn't speak for six years. And uh, they finally got back together and started being friends again about six months before she died. Well, and my mom wrote her out of the will. Well, how do we know she wrote her out of the will? Because my mom sent my sister a copy of the will that says, you were not in this anymore. And, well, so when mom died, because, you know, I didn't want to do it, uh, my sister was going to take care of the, she's the smart one, she was going to take care of all the funeral arrangements, and she'd already been working on all the other stuff, dealing with, um, dealing with, um, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, and everything else that you have to do, you know, nursing home insurance, how long you can stay in this place before they kick you out, you got to go to assisted living, it's an absolute nightmare. So mom died, she goes up to, uh, to, to the funeral home in London, Kentucky, where uh, dad, was, dad had been buried with them, and mom was going to be there too, and I have my plot right next to him with, with, with my name on it. And I, oh, I ain't going to be buried there. They, they, they don't know that. <laughs> so, uh-uh. I'm going, in a, I'm going in a hole wrapped up in a white cloth. That is all there is to it. Uh, and, and so they sit, my, my sister sits down <laughs> with the funeral director, and he opens up the, he opens up the envelope, and the first thing, says, first thing it says, under no circumstances should my daughter, Patricia Owens, be allowed to have anything to do with the planning of my funeral. Yeah, so, well, she still, she still planned the funeral because I wasn't going to do it. And so but, so, but the important thing was the file. She had the file. And it wasn't just a file, a bunch of papers in a drawer somewhere that you and your wife know where they are, that you're scared to, t- you're scared to have the talk with to your kids because, oh, we don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear it, Mom. You're going to be fine. You know what? get run over by a meat truck as soon as you walk out of this place. You never know. Man, there's people here. I've, I've buried them. You've had friends like that. One minute they're here, the next minute they're not. You got, there's nothing that, that guarantees you, you you're going to live to the end of this day, right? And after I had my uh, kidney incident, I really started to believe that a lot more. Uh, so, th- there's a, so that's kind of... Th- the other thing I'm going to encourage you to do, and then I'm going to start... I'm going to get into the spiritual... Um, when I was working in the hospital, people would be in car wrecks or train wrecks or they're, um, they'd be riding a... Um, <laughs> hydrate or die, baby. Uh, or they'd um, be riding a motorcycle. They'd, um, they'd wreck uh, and then they'd get brought to the hospital and then the person in the hospital... Uh, would, they'd wake up after three days and they started asking, hey, how's my girlfriend? What girlfriend? The girlfriend was on the back of the bike with me. Back of the bike, on a bridge, over a bridge, found her three days later. Uh, all sorts, it's like when they tell you to go camping, let somebody know when you leave and when you're supposed to be back. It's the same thing with this, right? Uh, when, you're, it, when you go, to, even going to the hospital, if you're in a trauma situation, the first thing, the first thing that they do they take your clothes off. They strip you down to nothing. There's nothing left. So your clothes are left there, left there in a pile on the floor. Now, if you're in a bad car wreck, guess what happens? Stuff gets thrown around everywhere. So the first thing the chaplain is going to ask you when you get to the hospital is like, is there anybody we can call for you? Yes, my son. Okay, what's his phone number? It's in my phone. Where's your phone? Somewhere on the side of the road on I-40. Right? So, now this might seem stupid, this might seem goofy, but, I mean, uh, if you're a runner or if you have run, you know about these things. If you've been in the Army, you know what they are, right? You can get these little tags, and it's called Road road ID, and on mine, I think what it says is because I can't see it, Father Doug Owens, Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, right coronary artery, uh, stent right coronary artery, uh, O positive blood, no known allergies, call Catholic priest, call Sean Smith with his, known, with his phone number. That, that's my, Sean Smith, is the, he was the chancellor of the diocese, and that's where all my will uh, and stuff is. So, unless my head gets cut off uh, by a wheel or something, then I don't have two of them. I don't tape one to my, one to my boot like the Army Rangers do, but, I'll, uh, but at least somebody will know who I am and know who to call, because that's 
Huh? What? Do something. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I just seriously recommend that you, even even with a wallet, you know, tr that that might work. Purse, maybe. G get something, put it on your body. All right. Okay. So, we have what the church calls the continuous right of the pastoral care of the sick. And that's what this is, right? So there's a way that this is supposed to be done. Unfortunately, we usually don't do it this way. Usually the way it happens is I, the, my phone goes off. Beep, boop, mm, uh, dog jumps up, I jump up, and invariably it's, you know, 2 in the morning and somebody, somebody's not well. And I'm always saying, if I'm going there at 2.30 in the morning, you better be in a certain condition, or I'm gonna, or I'm gonna leave you in a certain condition. Uh, I've gone in there before, and they're just like they're sitting up eating, 2:30 in the morning. I'm like, hey, I'm the priest. I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah, I got surgery tomorrow. Like, so don't put the, don't put that off, right? If you if you are going under. Now, this will, if, if you're going to be put under anesthesia, um, if you're going to get a, <laughs> if, yeah, if you're going to get a local, I would say don't worry about it. If you're going to be unconscious, get us involved, right? If you're going to go in for a colonoscopy, anything having to do with, uh, with uh, uh, what's it called, mother's milk, uh, propofol, get us involved, right? If you're going to be unconscious, uh, if you're going to be intubated, well, you better be unconscious if you're going to be intubated. Give us a call, right? Because I can't tell you how many times, as a, as a, as a, if you're going to go again, well, if you're going to go get a, um, what's it called when they put the thing in there? Go look in your heart. Uh, cat, uh, yeah, a heart cath, a heart cath. Yeah. If you're going to go, if you're go, if you're going to go in for one of those, give me a call, right? Because I've had too too many incidents where you'd be walking along in the middle or eating lunch at the hospital, and all of a sudden, code blue, cath lab, code blue, cath lab, that's three words, or in, that's two words you definitely want to hear, are code or blue. Uh, I mean, somebody's dying, and so, and I've given last rites, somebody who died just going in, just have, have their heart looked at. So the first time they told me I was going to have a cardiac ca a catheterization, scared me to death, and all, all, the, uh, old, uh, all the old farts over at a uh, at St. Thomas, they're just laughing at me. They've all got like two or three under their belts, and I'm shaking like a leaf because I know what can happen. I've seen it happen before. But get so you want to get us to anoint you, right? Anointing is not just for the dying. So if if you are if you are if you are sick, if you are ill, if you're not, if, you know, if you've got if you got the sniffles, you know, yeah, maybe not. But if you got if you you know got pneumonia or something like that, if you, if you, if you're really sick please come by the office or call us uh, to be anointed. Now, if you progressively get worse, you can get anointed again, right? It's not like one and done. You can get anointed again. Now, let me tell you a story how not to do this. So it was about, um, oh, it was a couple years ago. I'm looking to see if they're in the room. So I tell a story. No. So hypothetically, somebody comes up to me and says, Father, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going in for surgery uh, this Tuesday or Thursday. Tuesdays and Thursdays seems to be surgery days. Uh, I think Wednesdays and Fridays are golf days. And Tuesday, so I said, can you come, can, can I, can you anoint me? I'm going to have something worked on. I'm like, absolutely. They said, where, where are you going? Good. What are they going to do to you? Okay. Are they going to knock you out? Yeah. I'm like, okay, you're a perfect candidate. So go get the oils. And I always keep my oils um, in my pocket or in, uh, in the emergency bag so it can never be, I'm always ready to, to lube somebody up if necessary. And uh, so I just, so I anoint the person, go on to celebrate Mass, and come back, and Father, Father Alex had just gotten here, and he's like, hey, where's that green book that we use in, in, in the holy oil and stuff? And I'm like, it's over there. And he, so he found it. I said, what are you doing? He's like, well, somebody wants to be anointed. I'm like, 
who? And he goes, this person. I said, show him to me. And he points over there. Same person. 45 minutes later. 45 minutes later. I'm like, what's the matter? Mine didn't work well enough for you? And she's like, well, that, well, that, well the bishop said you, you, you could do it as much as necessary. Yeah, as much as necessary. I said, to, what you're doing is like walking up to communion and saying, I'll take 10, please. And it's like, that's not, that doesn't work, right? So when, whenever we anoint you, we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then we read, for, uh, we read a passage from, or we recite a passage from the, uh, from the book of James. Lord God, uh, if there are people um, now, I can't I do it all the time, and now I can't do it. If there are people sick, uh, James said, if, you, if there are people sick among you, let them send for the priest of the church. The priest of the church will anointing them with oil. Will anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick person, and the Lord, will, the Lord will raise them up. We ask that you be here amongst us. In the name of the Father, Son. I'm not sorry, not in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they say, Amen. Right. So we begin something that you, you think we always begin with, but we don't always. We begin, in, we begin with the prayer, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, if you just get anointed once, then, the, and, and I don't conclude with the, the, um, with the um, um, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We do the blessing, and that's it. Now, because it's called the continuous rite, if everything works the way it's supposed to work, uh, according to the way the church teaches, uh, then that would be one anointing, right? Then you go back. If you have to do, anoint them again, you do not make, you don't make the sign of the cross. I, I, the way it's supposed to, the way it goes, each time that you are with a person or the family during this time, from sickness to decline, there are prayers and rituals all the way through there. The one, uh, the one right we, we, when we think somebody's really coming close to death, we take them what? Viaticum, which means food for the journey, bread for the journey. But no, it doesn't mean bread for the journey. It means uh, to go with the journey, right? So we give them last holy, we give them a last communion. And then we do what are called the prayers of commendation. Now, the prayers of commendation, based in none, none, dur during none of these, do we make the sign of the cross again, right? The rite started and it ends with the sign of the cross at the side of the grave when the person is dead. So that's how the church envisions it to be one long, continuous rite. Now, you know, everybody's got a plan until you get shot, and then, it, it is, then it's all different. So we don't, it do, generally doesn't work that way. Um, people will call, you know, people say, hey, so and my dad's in the hospital, can you come in and anoint him? So absolutely come in and anoint him, pray with them, pray with the family. Uh, come back and we'll pray with you and you know be with you as, 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 as much as you need. Um, now um, and then when it comes time, it's like you know it, if it gets if it gets close, you know let us know, let us know. And we've always we pretty much you know, the, 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 the um, relationship that we have with funeral directors uh, and funeral homes is this kind of we it's not not as much over here because it's bigger. But when I was in Lenore City, you know I would let say hey we got one that's coming close or Janie would she would say you know we got one that's coming close. And so we always knew so we could at least get there and let the, and try and pray with the family as close to uh, the, time, the time of death uh, of the loved one. Now, is that always going to work? No. You guys know how it goes. Well, how long do you think it's going to be? Ever ask, ever ask a doctor or a nurse, how, how, how long do you think it's going to be? What answer do they give you? I don't know. So, and then there's also... Um, a thing called the apostolic pardon. Anybody ever heard of that? Yeah, because you, you, you hear me. If you hear me talk about dying, then you hear me talk about talk about this. Now, the reason you got to get a priest, the reason you want to have a priest, is so that the priest can give you this apostolic pardon. An apostolic pardon is a is an indulgence. Anybody not know what indulgence is? Thank God. All right, having to try and explain that it, 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 it was just a nightmare. Uh, so it's an indulgence. An indulgence is a special blessing that, that is given, uh, that can be given by doing a couple of things. Usually you get indulgences from what? Prayer? Did you get indulgences just for praying? 
no, usually it's connected to something, right? You're, it's usually to the, to the wishes of the Holy Father, uh, to uh, on um, on All Saints Day or All Souls Day. You visit a visit a funeral. You go to conf- what are the rules, right? You go, you go you, you do the thing that they want you to do. Uh, then you pray a rosary for the Holy Father's intentions. Uh, you go to you receive go to confession and receive communion, right? All right. So the apostolic um, pardon is 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 able to be is able to be issued by a priest, and this apostolic pardon removes the stain of temporal sin, and if it just uh, of, of any sin, as long as you are not attached to a venial sin. Now that's the thing. You got to be, you know, it's lo- longer story for a longer thing. But uh, but but what it means is there's no purgatory involved. You go straight to heaven. So that's the thing when you hear a lot of my brothers, uh, a brother priest uh, preaching over somebody, and you know they might not know him, they might not think, well, we know Billy Bob is looking down on heaven, down from heaven on us, and I know he's there, he's with the Lord. I'm like, eh, you might be a little sketchy there, my friend. Not because I, I don't, I don't know Billy Bob, I don't know, I don't know him from from Adam, but I don't really, so I don't know if he, I mean, did he make his peace before? I mean, did he receive? Uh, did he receive? And I'm not saying he's in hell. I'm just saying he might be taking a little time off in purgatory, All right? So we, so we don't. That's why we pray for the holy souls in purgatory, right? To get them out of there. Anybody who's ever gone to confession knows knows what I knows what I give. Three three, three glory bees for the holy souls in purgatory. I could give more, but you guys probably you know I'm just fun, I don't know if I can get them done. Um, so anyway, that is. I'll just let me read that to you so you know what that sounds like. Oh, also, let me just, I'm going to, when, when you, when, I forgot this part, when, whenever we anoint you, we anoint you with, uh, with, uh, with the oil of the infirm, and we anoint, we pray over you, all right, I put my hands on your head, and, um, and then pray over you. And then we anoint you on your forehead and the palms of your hands, right? So through this holy anointing, may the Lord in his love and mercy help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who frees you from sin save you and raise you up, okay? And, th- and then uh, just, a, just a pro tip, uh, priests are anointed um, on the backs of their hands uh, as opposed to the palms of their hands because our palms were anointed with chrism, um, with sacred chrism when we were ordained. So... I walked up to this joker in the hospital one day, and uh, he was laying there, and nobody told me anything. I said, "Hey, are you not not feeling well?" And he, you could tell he, what he was he was barely verbal, bar- bar- barely conscious. And I said, "Well, I'm Father Doug. I'm going to give you the um, last rites, and that's all I'm going to give you the apostolic part." And I explained to him what it was, and he was still kind of not react. And then uh, when I get to, and then I, I go through the anointing, and then when I get to the part where I where he where he holds out his hands, he holds them out. I mean, he holds them out like this. Uh, and I said, I said, can you flip them over for me? And he's like, priest. And I'm like, oh, so pretty cool. So um, yeah. So never got a laugh before, but anyway, all right. Uh, so that's how that works. The um, some some of the most the most important the, the the thing that that gets me the most is how people will will, will put this off. Uh, people will pr- pretend like you're not going to die. Obviously, uh, there's you guys being here today. You have a good awareness of how things work in life, right? Uh, there, there, there is an end point, and there is a way that you can prepare sacramentally for it. There's a way that you can prepare um, uh, morally and ethically for it, and there's a way that you can prepare physically uh, and just get doing all the the. Uh, physically, financially, uh, and doing this for for your kin. Um, the best gift that you can give your children, and I this is from the bottom of my heart because I got it from my mom. The best gift that you can give them is a pre-planned funeral uh, and a, a a good set of uh, of documents that make your desires known, right? And also. To appoint an advocate for you, because just because it's in your it's in your um, it's in your power of attorney, they don't always do it. 
right? If, if I've seen it happen before, right? They, they don't, just because it's written down and people start fighting or one son has moved away, they don't have to do it. I mean, you've you, you, you got to have people who want to contest it and say, no, I'll get my attorney in here. But some people don't want to do it, right? Some people don't like you as much as you thought they did. And so, so just be aware of that. Or have, have, um, have um, I'm not kidding, I've seen it happen, guys. I'm just telling you it happens out there. Uh, have an advocate, somebody who can say, right, well, or, or you tell them before, you know, favorite son, favorite son John, uh, or grandson John, uh, he's in charge, all right, and he knows where the will is, he knows, he knows where everything is that needs to be taken care of, I've talked to him, and if you've got any questions, you go through him, all right, he's got the power of attorney, he is my executor, he's the executor of my will, and he'll run that, and most people, unless you're filthy rich, are going to go, run with it, grandson. It's all yours, because really nobody wants to be put in charge of this. I mean, we, we, it's, it's tough, because it's, I mean, when, when you've got somebody coming up to you, I mean, we even had an issue with one of our priests where um, he did not leave real detailed, uh, re real detailed records about what he wanted done, but he did have two priests. He said, one's in charge of my money, and the other was in charge of me dying, right? He's the one who decides when it's time to pull the plug. And I've got that too. I've got, I've got one guy who's in charge, I've got one person who's in charge of what little money I'm going to have, and I've got one person who's in charge of deciding when, um, when, to, when, when to end care, right? Uh, because he understands, he's known, I've known me for you know, 15 years, we've talked about it, he understands the situation. Now, the thing is, because you, st you get this thing, if you have to do that, how many, how many people have ever, ever had to end care on, on, on somebody? That's tough, huh? Even when you know, they know what's what, even though, they, even though everybody knows that you know what, what they want to say to the doctor, you know, I agree, it's time to end, end care, It's really easy to feel like you're killing somebody. And that's not what you're doing, right? It's going to happen no matter what, right? And just like Paul said, there's a, there are certain conditions that are, if, if he told you what I think he told you, it's, it's kind of like a moving target. Something that's okay to do, something that you need to do today Correct me if I'm wrong, Paul. Something that the that, that church says, you know, you need to provide this and this and this today when you're sick but not dying and there's still some hope. Well, you go two months, three months down the road and the target's moved a little bit. And there are things that the church tells us that now become uh, not uh, heroic means or uh, what's it called? Extraordinary means as opposed to ordinary. Ordinary, ordinary measures as, a, as opposed to extraordinary, extraordinary measures. And if you leave this up to um, the hospital, just roll it. Yep, yep, bad news. You don't know what you're going to get. Now, I've never seen this. I still have a hard time believing it. But, um, you know, sometimes, sometimes they need beds. Sometimes, they're, sometimes things happen. Sometimes they're not really concerned about uh, a happy death, as, as, we, as we refer to it. Sometimes uh, a little bit of morphine uh, to help make, you, make somebody more comfortable. Can make, that, that, might, that might just be a, uh, um, a euphemism, right? Anything in, anytime you hear a word start with E-U, it means dead. Yeah, <laughs> just so you know. Eulogy, right? Uh, so make sure that you do you have that advocate. Um, as far as um, the, you know, the, the re does everybody understand why we go to confession? Does anybody not understand? Anybody not from here? Now, does, does everybody, did anybody not understand why we believe in purgatory? Anybody have questions about purgatory? You're an easy bunch. 
All right. And does anybody have a question about, because some people don't like to believe that there's purgatory. They like to believe that everybody just goes straight to heaven. Right? That's not what the church teaches. Anybody on board? Everybody on board with me so far? So does, it, does everybody understand the need for the, uh, for the anointing of the sick, especially at the time of dying? Okay. Now, do you understand the need for the apostolic pardon? Who did not know about the apostolic pardon before? Okay, good. If I've done anything today, I've let you know about that. So that's why, you know, to get a priest involved. Um, let's see. The, the preparation for the funeral, probably one another, you know, number two most, uh, most important, most popular thing to do ahead of time. People think it's stupid. Uh, they think, oh, no, it's all taken care of. It's not that big of a deal. Again, the, the people who are left at the time of your passing, and I don't usually say passing. I just, I'm very blunt. I say die uh, because you're not passing you're, or you're not, you're not buying the farm or whatever. Uh, but when, you, uh, when, when, when you've died and the people are left trying to figure stuff out, you guys know there's so much that happens. There's like, who, who's coming? Who's going to write the obituary? Uh, well, well, we can't. And, th and this is, especially around here, th the, the way it used to be, the way a lot of this stuff was written, was back for, for people 100 years ago, right? When you lived in the town, in the church that you went to, that was, you know, walking distance away, or and they didn't have... Um, um, embalming, right? So there, there, there couldn't be um, a long period of time. I mean, how many, how many people from the, mid, the, the Midwest or from the mountains, when uh, somebody dies, what do you do to them? Hmm? Either cold storage, or if you're going to do it fast, what do you do to them? You bring them, into the, bring them into the kitchen and lay them down on the kitchen table. That's until they started adding other rooms to the houses. Where they, you, you, they used to have parlors, that's where parlors started, right? Not just a place to put in plastic where you couldn't go because grandma did it, you know, but, but, or, uh, but it was a place to where they was like, okay, then they would wake. They'd wake the person right there for like a day or maybe 24 hours, and then all this would, all this would happen. All this would happen. The person, the, the, the priest would know that they were going to be sick, the priest knew that they were sick. They came over. They prayed for him. Uh, when, then, then, then uh, whenever, some, whenever the person was close to dying, somebody'd say, "Go get the priest." And they run down to the, they'd run down to the, uh, to the parish and bang on the door and so and so. My, you know, grandma's dying. Grandma's dying. And then they'd come back down. So he'd come down, you know, with his all of his every, everything that he needed. And then he'd say the prayer. He'd pray with the family, right? And then it, it would happen in a very methodical almost manner now it's just all over the place all over the place now you're trying to like oh grandpa you can't die because i got to come somebody's coming in from seattle all right and then you know can, can, grandpa can we can we live stream your death because this person's on a ship out in the middle of out in the middle of the ocean in okinawa and they want to be a part of i'm not making this up i'm saying this because it's happened right so Things aren't always going to work the way that we want them to do, so we need to try and do as much of this stuff as we can ahead of time. Picking out your music, picking out your readings, picking out your responsorial psalm, picking out your, um, what was I going to say? Um, just, um, the, yeah, well, I said the readings. Picking out the readings, that's not, that's, it's going to take 15 minutes of your time you know what happens when your four children and your two nieces and nephews show up and, it's, and, 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 the, uh, and the funeral is not in a couple of days when the funeral's in three weeks because we have to teleport people in from Jupiter, right? Everybody starts talking. Everybody starts having ideas. Then they start wanting to change things. Then they start wanting to say, hey, Father, can we have a balloon drop? At the, and they just start thinking of stuff and thinking of stuff. And, like, I think my dad would have liked to have a hot air balloon fly over and sprinkle confetti and also let doves out at the same time. Do you really think he wanted to do that? 
Or is this what you want to do? Because you saw it at the last funeral you thought you were at, and you thought it was cool. That's what happens. People see funerals, and the stuff that other people let people get away with, they think is okay, and that they're supposed to do it. Right? That's why we have, a, that's why we have, we have funeral plans. There's a way it's supposed to go. Now, I'm not going to say we're not going to be flexible, but come on. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's just crazy. And, uh, let me go back, though, because I forgot to mention this part. When my mom, I talked about her, her planning her own funeral, she had it planned down to where exactly what she wanted to wear. We knew exactly where it was. Uh, she she had, had, uh, had it planned all the way down to the shade, color, and brand of lipstick to be put on her corpse. Who knew, right? But was I pleased to, to know that? Yes, because if there were four, four grand, I mean four, uh, four um, siblings and two nieces and nephews, they're going to they're going to start talking about it. Well, you think Mom would have wanted to wear dress, this dress? Well, she never really liked that dress. Oh, but she looks so good in it, though. And then it's like da 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 da. And then people get mad. Then they start to get pie safe mad, right? And then, and then also, when you have the funeral, I mean, it can go one or two ways. I mean, it can be. It's supposed to be a time of healing, right? Because you've been riding this the whole time. And the funeral is meant to take you over the top and let you go into the station. And so when you're, it's a flipping funeral for crying out loud. And you guys can get mad at me if you want, but it's not a celebration of life, right? This, the person, we're here for one reason only. There's only one reason we've gathered in this room, uh, in that church. It's for that person right there. And if you think this is the right time for you to say something that you didn't get to say to her or him before, it's not. If you think this is the right time, if you think you're the, and you can get mad at me again, if you're not, but I've I kind of been to this one but because of prior practices, but if you think getting up at the, getting up at the eulogy and telling stories about how funny it was when Dad took you to, uh, the first time to go see a prostitute, da 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 da. You think that's the right time? No. I tell you this because it's happened, right? Oh man, I remember we used to go down to Tijuana. Shut up! <laughs> Off of there, and you know, they think they think that it's it's their time to be fun. Oh, he talk, he talks all the time, and as soon as they say that, I'm like, no. Leave it to the professionals, because people are out there in uh, in the pews wanting to grieve. And you know what? You know what needs to be comfortable. I mean, you know what needs to be uh, what, what is very um, helpful for grief: routine, right? Routine. That's why we have these things called rituals, right? My ritual is different from uh, a Baptist ritual for a funeral. If you've ever been to a first time Catholic goes to a ba Baptist funeral, they, could, they just come back and they go, what are they doing? D d does, it, does it work? I'm like, I don't know. I guess so. But yeah, but it's all, it's all different. And ritual is comforting in times of trial and in times of pain. So that's, people don't know what to do. I'm going to use this as an example. I've been to... Christine's mom's funeral, Christine's dad's funeral, Christine's brother's funeral. Now, when I went to her mom's funeral, uh, and they were, one was at a, what, were there all three at Episcopal churches? One wasn't. Okay, so the last one I went to was at an Episcopal church during COVID. Now, I've never been in, a, I've been in an Episcopal church in my life. I know it's pretty similar to what we do. They got nicer things, right? They have nicer churches, uh, and they have prettier stuff than we do, which kind of made me jealous. Uh, but you know what? You come in there, and you got people coming from all over the, not all over the country, but from a, lot, from a lot of different places. 
you got some people who are completely unchurched. You know, you know they're unchurched. You watch them, you watch their lips and see if they see if they say the R. This is how you start the temperature. Do they know the sign of the cross? Right? The Lord be with you. And if you get uh, and also with you, haven't seen you in ten years. Welcome back. Uh, and then if you get nothing, then they're, they're probably not Catholic. But then when you get down, uh, and then when you ask them to kneel, or, and then when you get to the Our Father, e- and either they, they either don't know it or they keep on going. That's how you know, right? But at, 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 um, at, her, at, at the funeral, I was lost. Priest, nice guy, very reverent, uh, you know, dressed nice, clean cut, nice fella, it seemed like. But he didn't tell anybody what to do. So you got, you didn't see it because you're behind us. You know, you got some people sitting down, some people standing up. You're trying to figure out who looks like they know what they're doing or maybe belongs there or at least it's been to one of these uh, Fandangos before. And so you're just watching and I figured, well, when, when in doubt, kneel. Uh, so, and they're looking, they're looking to me because I got cler- clerics on. I'm like, I don't know, I've never been here before. <laughs> so the thing that I always do, and it's because here we have so many mixed marriages or or just not even one not mixed marriage but people who are catholic aren't catholic and then you get people who, who come people who you work with i mean come on most of the people you work with aren't catholic right unless you work in the church well just the people who you work with are the ones who come to your funeral right other than your family so uh, the only people who know what to do you know, it, when you come to sunday mass watch when, when i screw something up but the minute the routine goes out the window, you people fall apart, right? So there, some, there's, there's uh, some, some folks in the, in, in the Hispanic community, they kneel at a different time, uh, a couple of folks do, uh, during the Spanish mass. Well, you want to you watch that, and all of a sudden, it's like whack-a-mole. When that happens, when that happens during the day, and you've got a couple of Hispanic ladies, and you're going down to kneel before everybody else is, you guys start looking at each other, then one of you, you start squatting, and everybody else, somebody else starts squatting, and you're up, and you're halfway up. And then sometimes I forget to say something, and I'm like, what are you doing still standing up? And they're like, you're not finished yet. And I'm like, oh, okay. So imagine that funeral. That's why I tell the people in the front row, listen, the only people who know what to do uh, really is me and the only people who know what to do when, when you when you come to a wedding are this, the only way they know what to do is because they watch the people in the front so I'm going to tell you you knew I do that at weddings too when to set up when to stand up when to sit down so you don't have to worry about all that stuff so you want the ritual is important but you want to make people understand and and being comfortable with that so if you know they're coming in from out of town and they're not Catholic just kind of say We'll take care of you. We'll make sure you know what to do. My sister stood halfway through through my mother's, not my mother didn't give it through halfway through through my homily about my mom dying. She didn't know to sit down. I'm like sit down, and she's just like sitting there, and I'm like sit down. <laughs> then, of course, so anyway, um, so <laughs> I, don't, I, I know it's about time to eat lunch. So to, to n- not to put. Uh, I try and make it kind of funny, because it is kind of funny. Uh, And if you can't laugh in a difficult time like that, uh, you have to. But this is one of those things, and I'm just telling you. Oh, oh, I did talk about eulogies, right? Okay, good. Um, let, Let the professionals help you, right? You go to a doctor, you go to a, uh, you go to a hospital, you just don't walk in there and start doing stuff on your own, because you don't know what to do, and you're not supposed to know. Right, I, we know what to do. We have people who this is what they do. Uh, this is what Janie's done for how many years? Twenty-three, and, and I've done it for eleven, and I'm pretty good at it. You know what? I'm gonna lie. I'm real good at it. <laughs> I'm really good at getting people through hospital time because I love working with the sick. I love going to the hospital. You probably you think I'm lying, but I like going to the hospital. I feel very comfortable there. I feel comfortable with people who are sick. I'm comfortable with people who are dying. You know, I'm comfortable with the dead, right? Uh, the only thing I'm not comfortable with are people after they've been embalmed. That freaks me out a little bit. I'm just telling you. Because my mom made my, sister, made my sister and I forced us to kiss our grandmother on the lips at her funeral. So just... So don't do that. Don't do that. 
Don't do that to your family. Go, go, kiss, go, go kiss Nona. Go kiss Nona. And my sister's running out. She's screaming and yelling. I just... Sorry. <laughs> this has never been this funny before. I don't know what. It's never this funny. It must be the microphone. I don't know where it is. So, all right, I'm done. Any, 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 just get it done ahead of time. Listen to what we're telling you. Don't, at a time, oh, when people are dying, and if you don't know what you're doing, and if you're not, I call, I call them ATFPs, a trained professional, right? Don't, don't, get, don't swing for the fences too much. When you go in and talk to somebody and their daughter's sick or their, daughter, their little daughter's dying and then she dies, well, I guess she needed a, God, needed, God needed a little angel in heaven. No, don't ever say that. Anything you think you should say other than I'm sorry for your loss, swallow it and don't say it, right? The best thing for you to do is just be there and be with them. You, you do not have to do anything. Right? This is like people keep com coming up and telling pregnant mothers what they need to do. How, how, how much do you like that, ladies? Okay? So don't, don't, come, don't come up with, any, with any, any, any cute little sayings or anything like that. Don't tell her it's gonna, everything's going to be fine because right, that's, that'll, that'll get you a punch. No, I, or don't or say, I know exactly how you feel. No, because you might, you might not. You probably don't. So everything you think that you hear on TV other than I'm sorry for your loss, keep it zipped up. Okay, any questions at all for me? Yes, ma'am. Mm. Uh, the church allows for uh, cremation. The church does not, uh, sorry, the church does not um, condone the sprinkling of ashes. Uh, some people would like to have their ashes mixed up with their partner's ashes. And I mean mixed up. That is a no-no. Some people have wanted their dog's ashes mixed up with their ashes. That is a no-no. I have a pretty good idea when people are getting, getting ready to go down a certain road. And if I, if, if I know that somebody's ashes as a priest, if, uh, and this is, this is recent, over like the past six, seven years, if, uh, if I know that their ashes are, go are not going to be put in a safe, secure, and permanent place, I'm not supposed to do the funeral. So, but, uh, they can be buried. They can be put in a columbarium. They can be put, uh, that's a niche. They can be put in a solid, hey, I haven't seen you in ages. What are you doing here? <laughs> it's been, been forever. Uh, and so also what you can do is if you have the, the inclination, you can put it in a permanent container and drop it to the bottom of the sea where nobody's going to get to it. On top of Grandpa's clock, sitting on the wood, sitting on the... Um, sit, no, a any place other than what I just told you, no. And uh, yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They need, to, they need to be, the church wants them kept together. You know, probably, probably you wouldn't give, you know, hey, Uncle Timmy, I mean, uh, t Uncle, no, Uncle John, you know, here's a breastbone, uh, or here's a thigh bone, you take one over here, all right? Come, come by and pick them up later, they'll be at the house, they'll be in the workshop, uh, they'll be in my workshop, yep. Don't, you're perfectly fine. Donating bodies, uh, do donating your body to science, it's, uh, it's loud, uh, praiseworthy and laudable. Uh, laudable. Huh? That's yeah, fine. As long as something gets buried. You've got to have part of it to be buried. You've got to bury something. Right, Paul?
That's what I did with Trip. Didn't give him the body farm, but gave him to the vet farm. Yes? Yep. You need to have a you need to have an intention, and I would say you need to still keep it stored somewhere. Um, we've had that happen a couple of times, and uh, when I was at St. Thomas, we would let people use our columbarium until like until they had a permanent place um, for for it to be buried. A lot of times with couples like that. No, not until that one up at the up at the up at the top of the hill gets paid for. All right. Nance? Either way. The church prefers that there be a casket and a body present with, um, with cremation to follow, but the, 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 the way that the world is these days, very rarely do that because... You know, from the, t- the first thing that people start doing when, so- when they find out grandma or dad died, they start making phone calls to let everybody know and st- start figuring out when can you get here. And then that's why most funerals are on Fridays and Mondays uh, because it, it works with travel schedules. So, um, anything else? Good. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we would prefer that uh, you would have a funeral mass. I think most people um, who, are, who are Catholics, they want a mass. Every once in a while, you'll get, a, you'll get somebody that's, you know, they, the, the family's not. I mean, I've, I've had it happen many times where the family's not, and they just say, no. Uh, if that's the case, a lot of people just get real bug-eyed and big-eyed, and I'm like, well, I'll just celebrate a private mass for them. No, it's, no, no. There's a difference between a private mass and a mass with a private mass is one that I would say for by myself for somebody who's died. If there's one person, doesn't matter if you have any family, have the funeral for your loved one. Doesn't matter how many people are there. You're you're doing the you're it, but but you could anyway. Yeah. What is the what? Like the yeah, we trust in the mercy of we. Yep, we trust in the mercy of God. Yeah, I mean it's that's called uh, it's it basically it's 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 similar to baptism by desire. If if for some reason we couldn't get to you because they weren't they wouldn't allow us in a room, then what we would do we we, we would I did a lot of anointings through you know through through glass. That's why we were so, I was so pissed off when they first told us we, we couldn't get in. A lot of priests were, were ticked off. And a lot of people were ticked off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't like that at all. But, I mean, this, this is a situation we're not, we're not prepared for, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, no, you just gotta. You, you just have to think that right. God can do what God wants to do, and if God, if God allowed this flu, then He can certainly uh, allow us to uh, to pray for people and anoint them spiritually. So I wouldn't. I would. If if you lost somebody that you was important to you, and you and you thought about that, and you're worried about them, wouldn't think twice about it. It's okay. It's not a good meeting until somebody cries, me or them. It's okay. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yes. I like a full burial. That's just me. What else? Back in the back. Yeah. Is it, is it, a, is it, a, Wool, is it a Wolitzer? <laughs> no, they, it's a, it's a it's a it's an old joke. Sorry. Now ah, you get it. Okay. Yes. Organ donation. Go ahead, please. Yep. Well, 
way. None of them are supposed to be taken before you die. <laughs> That's correct. As far as as far as donation of organs, I, I don't know. That's not my bailiwick. That's I'd, I'd be talking to a doc about that. But one thing I would be prepared of is if somebody dies, uh, there are certain situations where if, you know if if you got cancer uh, and you just you know just really bit really bad, eat up eat, eat up with it. Um, they're not going to be coming. I, I can't remember what the name of the um, of the, the group is, but they're not going to be coming looking at you. For, uh, what is it? Unals. Yeah. Well, they have all different. There's all different names. But anyway, the, be be prepared if for someone, if a loved one is killed suddenly, uh, like you either had like a, a, a heart attack or a, a sudden car wreck, they will come to you very quickly uh, when 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 the docs are saying, hey, they look like this person's not going to make it. They'll be coming to you very quickly. Uh, uh, to say, hey, can we talk to you about possibly donating some of your loved one's organs? So that's another thing you need to be prepared for, to say, yes, he wanted it, or no, he did not want it, because then, then the back and forth starts there, too. Yeah, it is, but, the, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to try. I, no, no, seriously, they'll try again. And I'm not saying anything wrong with it, they just will. You guys, that this don't this is going, no, no, no that's just you, you need to talk to your doctor about that. Paul, you got that? Paul. I don't, I don't want to interrupt, but I've been told we got to get, get moving. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be around for a little bit. Uh, feel free to ask them. Um, I really want to encourage you uh, to have lunch uh, and then stay for the for the final part. This is the this is where the rubber hits the road here. Everything that we're telling you about, uh, y where you where you can sit down and talk to and begin uh, planning. Uh, not, not necessarily do it all right now, but this will tell you the, the importance. Of putting into action what we've been talking about. Okay, so let's uh, let's say our prayer before meals, before everybody gets up and runs to the restroom. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. There you go, guys. Thanks. Okay. I saw it. I saw it.